Hello and welcome to today's reading vlog. This is the first reading vlog I have ever done and I'm so excited <laughs> to be reading all day today. I have just gotten off of our tarot premiere and this video is due tomorrow. So hopefully you're watching it on time, <laughs> but I'm giving myself the gift of the rest of this evening to just read, which feels so indulgent and wonderful and exciting. So I'm sure you saw from the intro, today's book is Bunny. I have been really wanting to read some Dark Academia. So when this book came up on the random number finder, I was so excited because I just recently got this book at Half Price Books and it's in perfect condition. And it was only like $7.99 or something for the hardcover, which I love. And I have been wanting to read this. So I don't know a lot about this book going in, except that it was a TikTok viral book. So lots of people have talked about it. I also know that it is Dark Academia. I know that it's a unreliable narrator. I know that some people have thought it was completely unhinged and sadistic and that sometimes it kind of or that it might leave you not knowing what really happened. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> sometimes it's really fun, especially as a writer, to read stuff that has ambiguous endings because then you can really decide for yourself what you think it should have been or what you think really happened. So I'm excited for that. I have just sat down before the premiere and done my little code here, color code for annotations, which I have <laughs> talked about this on my heart breathings channel a little bit. I have no problem writing in books. And part of that is because I write a lot of books. And so sometimes I will get a proof copy and I will write in my own books. And I also find it helps me remember things better. It also, if I'm reading from a writer's perspective and I want to study the genre or learn something about how to write in this manner or something like that, it's so helpful for me to have references where I can just turn back to a certain color of page flag and be like, oh yes, that was my thought on this especially if I think there's foreshadowing and I'm sort of guessing that this is a certain plot point I can mark it in here and then I can come back to it later and say yes that was the midpoint or oh wait there was a better place that I think is the midpoint and I can really study it and learn it from there so I have at the moment I have six different colors and I have four I have this little pouch <laughs> that basically has all of my supplies for annotating books. And I have in here basically six different sticky notes. These are not Post-it brand, <laughs> sorry to say, but I specifically wanted some that match my highlighters. So I have these pretty colors, just kind of basic colors. And then I also got this sort of off-brand set of highlighters that are called macaron colors and they're really nice like sort of pastel but a little bit darker than pastel and they almost exactly match the colors in my little pack of post-its here. I also keep some correction tape in here and then in the little front pouch I have what is normally my page flag color set and these page flags specifically match with my post-it notes. And I have lots and lots of these, but they're all very specifically just these exact colors because most of the time when I'm annotating, I'm annotating nonfiction, trying to learn a little bit more about how to write books properly and how to become a better storyteller in some way. Or it could be things that I'm learning about marketing or writing blurbs or anything about the business of books or business of being an entrepreneur and things like that. And so I have been using these tools with this specific specific pin pouch. Look at how cute this little boba tea is. It's so cute. It's like a little, little boba tea and the little bobas inside move. I got that at a hotel. <laughs> random, random things. Inside this front pouch, I also have a couple other just you know, other colors here and some smaller post-its in case I want those. And I usually do also have a set of clear post-it notes in here, but I must have taken them out. So I use those for helping myself to remember and annotating and taking notes on the nonfiction that I'm reading. So this is my first time with this particular system doing a fiction 
novel and well it's kind of redundant but doing a novel and I have a bunch of page flags that I got off of Amazon and I've seen other people like on booktube and things like that try to match the colors of their page flags to the front of the book so I thought I would do that too and this one seems to have some similar type of like orange and pink tones so I'm this the little thing sometimes the more beautiful I can make things and the more fun it is and the more I feel like a student and I feel like I'm learning, then the more I enjoy going through the process and I'm more motivated to do it. So my particular little page flags here are laugh. So I want to mark in this light pink anything that made me laugh, which I already have one of those in here. <laughs> quotes to remember, which those might go hand in hand, but uh, sometimes I find when I'm doing annotation, I have to just sort of feel my way into what my topics are going to be and they might change. So what's a quote I want to remember? I also have one for unreliable narrator. So anything that I feel is, is that true? Is that real? Um, is she telling the truth? is this like a mystery that I need to unravel? Then the darker pink is going to be anything for plot. So argument against transformation, the act one doorway, the midpoint, any of those kinds of things, I'm going to try to mark and write down my thoughts in the book. Then the blue post-it is, it just says sinister. So anything that I've heard people say, this is like sinister or sadistic. And so anything I feel like shocks me a little bit, I'm going to mark in that blue color because I tend to have a hard time being hard on my characters because I develop an affection for them but I think it holds me back sometimes as a writer because I'm not hurting my characters as much as they need to hurt in order to grow and so I'm interested in learning from people who are really good at being sinister in their books and then the purple one I added as I was going here because I realized I really want one for imagery in here because there are certain things like the, th the first thing that I highlighted here for imagery is behold the Christmas lit white gauze floating everywhere like so many ghosts. And I just love that. This is already in this first chapter. It's so very different from my writing style. And sometimes I find that as a reader who is a writer, a little bit of a challenge because I sometimes will doubt myself like, should I be writing stuff that is more like this? Because this feels so much more literary and that I think is my biggest hang up about writing Dark Academia and wanting to read it a little bit more to see if I could possibly write it because I feel like Dark Academia is very literary in tone and I'm just not sure that it's ever going to be my style but I'm going to try it on and we're going to see because I also love to grow as a writer I love to get better and if you look at my early books from 2010 all the way through 2023 you see massive difference in the quality of my writing but I think in general the style is just always very conversational and it's not there's not as much like literary imagery and other things like that, but I do enjoy reading it. So sometimes I doubt my own process, which is one of the dangers, I guess, of being a writer who also loves to read. So I have a couple of things I marked here as potential foreshadowing, but I also decided to just put a little note here. I put a note in the beginning about when I started reading it so I can keep track of that. And then I wrote a little bit more in this first chapter here about what I feel of this first chapter. Now I'm gonna go through this writing or reading vlog without spoilers. I'm gonna do the best I can, but this isn't really a spoiler because it's the first chapter of the book, but I wrote great first chapter. It's such a familiar feeling to me that she seems to hate these girls who call themselves bunny, but at the same time, she secretly wishes she could be like them and is obsessed with them. And so there's this feeling of she's standing there with a friend who obviously has like, does could care less about these girls and thinks they're ridiculous. But she, the second those girls notice her, she feels chosen, like, hi, hi, it's me. Like, I resonate with that so much. And it's such a shameful and embarrassing place to be. And so it immediately resonates with me. And I can already feel that sort of gritty emotion to this vulnerability and like kind of self-shame, self-hatred. And I'm interested to see where this goes as she gets noticed by the bunnies. 
So I'm going to read to you the blurb for this and also the very first little uh like writer blurb, someone that like wrote a review of it. And I just think it's really fun. So we were just these innocent girls in the night trying to make something beautiful. We nearly died. We very nearly did, didn't we? Samantha Heather Mackey couldn't be more of an outsider in her small, highly selective MFA program at an elite New England university. So they're all writers, by the way. A scholarship student who prefers the company of her dark imagination to that of most people, she is utterly repelled by the rest of her fiction writing cohort. A clique of unbearably twee, I don't even know what that means, but I get, I get the sense of it, rich girls who call each other bunny and seem to move and speak as one. But everything changes when Samantha receives an invitation to the bunny's fabled smut salon and finds herself inexplicably drawn to their front door, ditching her only friend Ava in the process. As Samantha plunges deeper and deeper into the bunny's sinister yet saccharine world, beginning to take part in the ritualistic off-campus workshop where they conjure their monstrous creations, the edges of reality start to blur. Soon her friendship with Ava and the bunnies will be brought into deadly collision. The spellbinding new novel from one of our most fearless chroniclers of the female experience, Bunny is a down the rabbit hole tale of loneliness and belonging, friendship and desire, and the fantastic and terrible power of the imagination. And this is by Mona Awad. And so there's a little picture of her. And Lena Dunham wrote a little praise for this that says, Mona Awad's precision is only matched by her wit as she mounts one of the most pristine delightful attacks on popular girls since clueless you will be glued to your cashmere blanket and i've also heard this uh compared to the secret history but uh more of like secret history meets clueless or secret history meets heathers that kind of thing and i i'm immediately drawn to that i love that idea again not i don't know if something i could write but i'm going to read it both to enjoy it, but also to hopefully learn from it. But it's very, very clear right from the very first chapter that here she has this friend that she should cherish, but instead she secretly wants to be a part of this clique that she also hates. <laughs> and that is a very complex and complicated place for a character to be in. And you know right away that she's going to abandon this friend of hers to be with these other girls and so I'm interested in being here for the journey so that's enough talking that's a long talk so let's get to reading So I've been sitting on the couch reading for a while. It is 7.30 at night and I have made it to page 93. <laughs> this book is weird. <laughs> so this is how far I've gotten in and I've gotten a good amount of annotations in here because there's a lot that's really like made me laugh, made me think and really probably I guess maybe starting around page 50 I'm on page 93 now 50 51 I'm really just starting to think okay this character this is more than just unreliable narrator right so this is like insanity 
<laughs> descent into madness. Like I don't trust anything that she says. And it's really, really interesting and fun to read. And I'm definitely making like lots of good notes on it. And I'm really excited to see where it goes because this is definitely going to be a book that surprises me at every turn. And that's really fun to see. Um, I'm pretty sure... I don't know that this is going to follow just like traditional structure. I don't even know what to expect, but it's told in three parts. Part one ends at page 120. So I have this much more to go, but I think I've hit around the act one doorway at page 93. So I'm interested to keep reading plot wise to sort of see if it does follow any kind of traditional structure. I think for this particular vlog, I'm only going to make it or try to get to that part one finish and then reading sprints coming up this weekend. If you're watching this during the spooktacular, I will keep reading this and try to finish it at that point, but I'm enjoying it. And I have a feeling if it's already this insane by page 93, I can't even imagine where we'll be at page 150, 200, 300 or so. So that's going to be really interesting and, uh, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I like it. Um, okay, this book is super unexpected and I'm totally in love with it. I was so tired earlier and now I am 1000% in. So at 93, I thought I had hit what might be the first act doorway, but it, it really is like between 93 and 120 in terms of pages in the paperback book or the hardcover book. It's basically our character has entered the doorway and this is her key event, which is what we call a moment where the character is locked into the story. There is no turning back. And really, I am going back and forth in my head between whether it's that page 93, because there's there's definitely something that happens there that I don't think that they would necessarily let her out of. And I'm trying to stay out of spoilers, but in 120, when we get to page 119 and we're moving into part two, she's definitely in. This character is in the story. She's locked in. She's not getting out of this situation, which is what we call the first doorway or the doorway of no return. And this is definitely a doorway of no return for this character. What is really interesting about this book is that we have, you know, have you ever read The Bell Jar? So The Bell Jar was one of the first books that I read that, as I'm reading through it, it's very subtle at first where you're just kind of reading through and it seems like this character's normal and we're just getting a normal story. And then suddenly you realize, okay, is she like eating raw meat and talking about why she doesn't think it's worthwhile to shower? And it all seems so rational. And that was my first real introduction to a story with sort of an unreliable narrator. You can't trust her. You don't really believe her. She's kind of losing her mind, <laughs> descent into madness. And I really, really loved that story. Another one of my favorite stories is The Awakening by Kate Chopin. And I wrote an entire paper in college on this different kind of thing, but it's also this sort of uh, musical imagery and this descent into depression and other things that it it's done in such a beautiful like captivating way it's one of my favorite stories ever and I am loving this one because it's very much a like what the heck am I reading in some ways but also the imagery is so good and the writing is so 
compelling and beautiful. And I, I feel like it's so incredibly relatable because there's so many things that this character says and feels that I have related to for so much of my life and haven't been able to put into words quite exactly the same way that she does. But here's, here's an example. <laughs> um, oh, bunny. She's holding a flute full of fizzy pink water upon which I am now drifting, thrashing a little to keep afloat. Inside, a spiked red thing bobs, bleeding red into the pink waters. And it's like you realize she's just looking at somebody's like glass of champagne with like a cherry in it or something like that. Maybe because it's spiked, maybe it's a raspberry. But the fact that she's zoning out and trying to avoid what's going on, potentially slightly drugged. And she's looking at this glass as if she can imagine that she's just floating in it. It's like she's just staring at it and she's lost touch with reality. And I just think it's so clear that I just love it. But there's also things here, this like this idea of um, basically like having disdain for a group of people because you find them to be exactly what you wish you were, but also what you definitely don't want to be. And I know that sounds so contradictory, but I resonate with that. I understand what it feels like to want to be, you know, the rich or beautiful girl or the popular girl in school and to never quite feel like you fit in and to hate them for that. Hate is a strong word, but just to have that sort of like jealousy, but you don't want to feel that way. And when you're around your real people, you feel great. But when you're around those other people, you feel like you're not enough. And so then when they choose you, it feels special. And my book, Beautiful Demons, my very first book that has an entire series based on it, most of you watching this will know that series, The Shadow Demon Saga. That's exactly the way that Harper feels is she doesn't she doesn't want to be the popular girl, but at the same time, she wants so badly to belong. And so she has disdain for these popular, beautiful girls and wondering what, what do I not have that they have? But then when she gets invited to be a part of their world, it's like, do I taste this like forbidden apple or do I rebel against it? And that's really what the core of the series is all about. And this is such a massively different presentation of that same type of theme of like popularity and belonging and values and, and choosing your place and that kind of thing. Here's kind of how the annotations ended up looking. And I, I have been kind of writing in the margins a little bit and just sort of putting some of my thoughts about the plot and about the characterization, the imagery in particular. I've been marking things that I feel like are foreshadowing for the future, so I'm interested in that. And then there was a couple of mentions, and this is why I'm talking about The Awakening with its musical imagery, because I studied that so thoroughly in college that I keep noticing some musical imagery in this as well. And I want to go back through with these annotations and sort of uh, look at those points and see how they connect to each other. Uh, but so far, I think this is brilliant. And I think this is about as far as I'm going to be able to get tonight, because uh, I don't think I can read through the whole book in this one vlog. But I hope that you have enjoyed this look inside a writer reading a book. And, you know, just in general, I feel that in some ways, it does get difficult as a professional author to read other people's books because of the reasons I mentioned earlier that sometimes it feels like I can doubt my own voice, my own style. And when I really admire what someone else is doing, sometimes I think, gosh, I wish I could do that. And it makes me doubt what my voice is and whether I'm on the right path. So sometimes that can be difficult, but at the same time, by and away, reading great works that I'm really enjoying, especially works that are different from my own, people that have a different perspective, uh, different types of storytelling just help me to grow as an author. And I find it really fun to just kind of pull it apart, to look at it, to learn from it, to see what's different and to kind of get under the hood, so to speak, to see how it's constructed and see what I can take from that and learn. Uh, and then there's also just this feeling of admiration when someone is doing something really well and it feels like easy storytelling, but you know that there was a lot of work that went on behind the scenes and it just 
is really fun to read as a writer. And I find that reading is a necessary part of being a writer because we learn so much through reading fiction and we can take classes and we can, you know, of course, learn a lot just from doing and writing, but there's so much that you can learn just from watching someone who is a masterful, sto masterful storyteller tell a great story. And Bunny, I am definitely enjoying. So thank you to the people that recommended this one. <laughs> thank you so much for watching this reading vlog. Tomorrow, if you're watching this when it first came out, we are in the middle of our spectacular celebration, celebrating 13 years since the release of my first book, Beautiful Demons. Tomorrow we'll have our coffee chat and then Saturday we're going to get together for reading sprints where I will attempt to read a few more and maybe the second part. This is in three parts. I'll try to read the second part on Saturday and we'll talk through it in the chat. So I will see you there. Thank you again for being here. Make sure that you hit the like on this video. Let me know if you've ever read this book in the comments below. If you've ever read any other Dark Academia that you would recommend or if you want to also let me know a spooky read that you've been reading lately that you love, I would love to hear all about it in the comments. Okay, all the spooky love to you and I will see you next time.